Hello and welcome to this video on power factor correction. We're going to be talking about a few of the principles that we've covered in previous videos, including reactance, impedance, calculating currents in polar form, as well as phasor diagrams. So if these are topics that you're not too sure about, or if you haven't seen our previous videos, then I would suggest going back to those first before looking at this topic of power factor correction. But anyway, moving on to the topic at hand, we have in front of us here a series RL circuit connected to an AC power supply. A good context for a circuit like this might be a motor. A motor is made up of long lengths of wire in coils and those coils have an inductive property or an inductance. But because of the length of those uh, coils and the length of the wire that goes up into making them, they also have a resistance as well. And so we can represent this by two separate components that aren't really discrete separate components in reality, but nevertheless for the purpose of analysis it makes it easy to represent them as such. One of the problems that we've seen in circuits like this when we looked at phasor diagrams is that despite our uh, voltage being uh, in phase or a reference voltage as such, so I can mark on uh, a brief phasor diagram as such, our current is going to be a lagging one. Our current's going to lag by a certain angle um, because of the reactive properties of the inductor. And this is a big problem because reactive power, which is dissipated by the inductor, is what we can think of as a wasted power. Whereas real power, uh, the real component of power, which is dissipated by a resistor, is what we can think of as being useful power. Again, if you're not sure, you can go back to our videos where we discuss real and reactive power. But nevertheless, this is a big problem in industry where we have large motors which are potentially dissipating a lot of uh, wasted power, reactive power, as well as doing useful work with real power. And so one of the things we can do is we can try and correct for what we call a lagging power factor by introducing a capacitor into the circuit as well. So if I do that on my diagram here, we can turn this uh, this this circuit into what we call a true parallel circuit which we saw in some of our previous videos here by adding a capacitor in parallel to both the resistor and the inductor and if you've checked out our videos on phasor diagrams you know that this capacitor is going to draw its own separate current now there's going to be a current that flows through that capacitor uh, down this branch here and that is going to be a leading current, and that current's going to lead by 90 degrees. So we're going to see an additional current, uh, which I'll mark on here as IC. I'll mark this current as IRL. And what we can do is, by selecting an appropriately sized capacitor, we can produce a, a capacitor current, or draw a capacitor current, that is going to cancel out the reactive component or the vertical component of our um, motor current or the, the current that's going through the resistor and the inductor. And so what we can do is we can say that if our capacitor current here is sized in such a way that it balances or cancels out our reactive current, then we're left with a resultant current that is completely in phase. So our, our resultant IS would be in phase with the supply current because we've used that capacitor current, that, that um, leading current, to cancel out the lagging effect of the, um, the motor or the inductor in this case. So power factor correction has some big benefits in industrial scenarios where large amounts of power uh, or large amounts of energy might be being wasted by reactive power. We're going to apply this to a more theoretical example, first of all, by putting some values on our diagram and performing some calculations as to how to select an appropriately sized capacitor. So let's go back to our diagram here, and let's say, first of all, that we have a 100 volt supply, um, 
so I'll mark that on here 100 volts at 50 Hertz let's say that my resistor uh, has a resistance of uh, 20 ohms let's say that the inductance is 50 millihenries and let's say that we don't know the value of the capacitor we want to select a capacitor that's going to perform power factor correction in this particular circuit so what I want to start to do is to work out the current that was currently flowing in the circuit before I've introduced this capacitor so pretending this capacitor isn't there we're left with one current which I'm going to call IRL so we'll mark that on our diagram here IRL IRL flows through a resistor and inductor and the first thing we need to do is calculate the reactance of this inductor so XL is equal to 2 pi FL and in this case that's 2 pi times the frequency which is 50 times the inductance which is again 50 but it's milli Henry so that's 50 times 10 to the minus 3 and that all comes out as 15.71 ohms so I want to calculate IRL that flows through this whole circuit branch and so what I have to do is calculate the impedance of this whole circuit branch which impedance consisting of the real term and the imaginary term the real term being resistance the imaginary term being reactance and so we can represent impedance as being Z is equal to R plus J XL and our values are going to be 20 the resistance plus J 15.71 as we've just calculated there so when I want to um, calculate the current IRL it's probably beneficial to be in polar form because I'm going to do a division in just a second as part of Ohm's law and so having 20 plus J 15.71 is correct but I'm going to convert that to polar form which is 25.43 at an angle of 38.15 degrees and that's an impedance in ohms if you're not sure about how to convert between rectangular and polar form um, we have previous videos where that's covered so I would um, go and check those out if you haven't done so already but moving on we're now going to use Ohm's law to calculate the current IRL so IRL very simply is voltage divided by impedance so V over Z and we know that the voltage is 100 it's our reference voltage um, by definition so we're going to say that's 100 and angle of 0 degrees and that's divided by our impedance for that particular branch which we've just said in polar form is 25.43 at an angle of 38.15 and that comes out um, by dividing the first two terms and subtracting the angles when we divide two terms in polar form that comes out as follows we get 3.93 at an angle of minus 38.15 degrees now that I've calculated that I'm actually going to convert it back to rectangular form um, which comes out as 3.09 minus J 2.43 so we have IRL in both polar and rectangular form and because they're currents they're both measured in amps now let's return to our circuit diagram because we've just calculated the current that flows through the RL branch of the circuit and as we said at the beginning this current is a lagging current it has a negative angle associated with it in polar form now let's imagine we've added our capacitor but we don't know what value this capacitor needs to be 
one thing we do know is that it needs to cancel out the reactive element of the current that's drawn by the inductor. Let's see what we mean by going back down and looking at our calculations in rectangular form. The current that we're drawing currently through the, R, the RL branch, or, or the motor as it might be in reality, is this one here, 3.09 minus J 2.43. 3.09 amps is what we can call a real current. But then this J term here, minus 2.43 amps, is what we call our reactive current. And so if I go back to my original diagram here, IRL, the real current is the horizontal component of that um, IRL, that uh, diagonal there. And the reactive component, minus 2.43, is the current that's taking us downwards um, in this particular example. And so what we want is a current that's going to cancel out that vertical component. And so we want our capacitor to draw plus J. 2.43 to calculate to, to cancel out sorry the minus j 2.43 reactive current in our rl branch so how does that help us well looking back at our diagram here we've calculated irl and we know that we need to calculate another current ic which is the current flowing through our capacitor and we know that that current we can also calculate by Ohm's law uh, by saying voltage divided by impedance gives us current. Now the impedance in this case is just one single component, which is a reactance, the reactance of that capacitor. And so what we can do is we can say the following. We can say that I C, uh, the capacitor current, just using Ohm's law, is equal to voltage divided by X C. Now we know what the capacitor current should be. We want the capacitor current to be equal to 2.43 amps. Now, the unknown in this case is XC. We don't know what the reactance of that capacitor should be. We haven't chosen the value of our capacitor yet. So rearranging that formula, we can say that XC is equal to V over IC. And we can say that that's 100 volts divided by 2.43 amps. And that's going to give me a value of 41.15 ohms. The last step is to work out the capacitance that's required to give us that particular reactance which will draw that particular current. We're working backwards in this instance. We know the current uh, that we want in order to cancel out the reactive or the, 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 the reactive current in the RL branch. We know what reactance now is required of our capacitor that's going to give us that current. We now need to know what capacitor is required in order to give us that reactance. The way that we'd normally work out reactance of a capacitor is XC equals 1 over 2 pi FC. And again, we can rearrange that to work backwards, as it were, because we want to know C. We want to know the capacitance. Uh, we already know the reactance that we want in this particular instance. So rearranging that, C equals 1 over 2 pi F X C. And again, we can just substitute some values in to our formula here. And we can say that that's the same as saying 1 over 2 pi, our frequency was 50, times xc, which we've just said is 41.15. And that comes out with a value of 77.35 times 10 to the minus 6. And it's a capacitance, so it's measured in farads. Or we can say 77. 0.35 microfarads. So now what we're saying in effect is if we place a 77.35 microfarad capacitor in our circuit that we saw at the start here, that capacitor 
is going to draw a current and that current is going to perfectly cancel out the reactive current in the inductive branch. Remember that the inductive branch and the capacitive branch are bro both drawing reactive currents, but the reactive current drawn in the RL branch is a lagging current tilting downwards on our phasor diagram. The reactive current drawn in our capacitive branch is a leading current tilting upwards. And so the idea being that we've selected the perfect capacitor so that the leading current is going to perfectly cancel out the lagging current in this case. So by placing a 77.35 microfarad capacitor in that circuit as it's given there, we're going to achieve what's called power factor correction. And we'll have a circuit that has a supply current which is completely in phase with our supply voltage and we'll have no wasteful effects caused by lagging or leading currents. So I hope you found this video useful on power factor correction and how we can take a theoretical approach to calculating values of components that are going to achieve power factor correction in AC circuits.